Doctors of Reddit, what patient made you go how the frick are you even alive? Type 1 diabetic in their 20s presented dead of DKA, unresponsive, no pulse, in VF, multiple rounds of CPR, defibrillated, eventually stabilized in IQ, self-discharged immediately after being extubated less than 48 h later. When I was hospitalized for DKA I was really surprised by how I felt so much better in such a short time. I work in an in Lebanon where the construction safety regulations are a bit lax. A few years back I remember that construction workers were falling off buildings like dominoes. One guy came in having fallen from a few stories up and got impaled by an iron bar that went through the back of his neck and out of his left eye socket. Guy was alive and talkative when he got to our uh, rushed down to surgery. Apparently it had missed every vital structure somehow and the guy didn't even lose vision in his eye. My mother. We used to live in East Texas and my mom had this lady come in and had a huge infected wound in her leg. Like massive to the point they might have to amputate and she had asked her why she waited so long before coming in when it was obviously festering. Well turns out this woman was letting her dogs lick it clean because their mouths are clean and she was soaking it in Dr. Pepper because doctor had her thinking it would help. Needless to say my mother looked at her like a deer in the headlights when she said that. Talk to my mother she also said there was a couple K9 teeth in it because the lady had an old dog. My friend in nursing school was in charge of checking in and out a habitual patient that also was seen by a full nurse and doctor. On checkout she noticed a bandage on the guy. Oh that's for my hole the guy had an open sore that kept getting bigger and bigger and he had stuffed 3 t-shirt in it. He had been having repeated health problems and they just listened to his lungs. Would give him an antibiotic and treating him. Yay. I've seen this before. Had a poor woman that had a wound on her back that was so bad, you could see her spine. I was so happy when she finally passed. Her family had been keeping her alive as long as possible to collect her social security checks. I had liver failure. When I was 8 months pregnant, my baby had stopped moving for several hours. So they did a c-section. They found out during blood work that my liver had failed. I almost needed a transplant. I bled so much that my body used up all its clotting stuff. I was in IQ for 3 days, in hospital for 2 weeks. My liver recovered. I went home with my son. We could both have died. The hepatology department and maternity department were working together, which is not a usual thing for them. It was a cute fatty liver of pregnancy. So happy you're both here today. Patient here. When I was 7 I had horrible asthma. My mom often lied in my bed with me and listened to my breathing. One night she fell asleep and jerked awake in the wee hours of the night, and found I was not breathing. Ghost to the ear immediately because it was only like 10 minutes away. Not sure what happened while there, what tests they did, but I was declared dead. In the morning I woke up, asked who I believe was a nurse where I was, and she started crying and called in my mother, who hadn't slept all night. The doctors said they didn't know how the frick I was still alive. Now 16 and haven't had any hospital worthy complications since. And god dang it, my mom is the most amazing and loving person on this green earth. I had been decidedly dead for about 10-30 minutes, which is why I wasn't transported to the morgue. Your mom probably never slept again holy crap. I had a patient in the emergency room who had been involved in an awful car accident where firefighters and paramedics spent an hour trying to get him out of his car. Reportedly, he attempted to walk to the ambulance and when he arrived he was awake and talking. Confused speech, but still. Then paramedics signaled the back of his head to me. His skull was popped open on the back so much that I could see inside. We paged the brain surgeon immediately and the patient was taken directly to the operation theater. Months later I heard from my colleague that he was still alive and had no damages other than some occasional balance problems. Not a doctor, but a patient. I was in the hospital after a pretty gnarly four-wheeler wreck. I was destroyed fractured my skull, broke three ribs, my right shin, it was sticking out of my leg, broke my collarbone, my right arm, had some pretty bad cuts bruising, fractured three vertebrae in my lower spine, and internal bleeding. I've had a pretty high threshold for pain basically my entire life because I've always been clumsy stupid. But that was god awful, even after I was given pain meds. At some point, IDK exactly when it was, I was in and out quite a bit. 
I heard two doctors conversing outside my curtain. One of them said I don't know how she keeps regaining consciousness. There's no way she should be awake right now. The other doctor replied. Honestly I don't know how she's even alive. I think they thought I was asleep. IDK. But that scared the heck out of me. Not a doctor, but was the patient. When I was in boot camp I developed an upper respiratory infection during second phase. I didn't want to get dropped back a platoon so I gutted through. Got back and went to sick call where they treated me for a host of things. When they x-rayed my chest, the doctors came out with my films and literally asked how the heck are you still alive? Your lungs are so full of mucus you should be dead. Turned into walking pneumonia at some point. I also had athlete's foot that turned into cellulitis and my last wisdom tooth yanked. So the combination of meds they had me on was enough that I don't even remember that week at all. I'm not a doctor but I did meet a patient who fell from a 5 story building, landed on his upper back, woke up in the hospital the next morning and got up walking around like nothing ever happened. Barley a scratch on him. Think about it every time I'm in a building with at least 5 stories, just looking down like how in the world did this guy walk away from that like he fell off his bike and took a nap. Actually, I've seen worse injuries from someone falling off a bike lol. I'm a midwife and we have patients who have massive obstetric hemorrhage, mod, which is classed as any blood loss over 2 liters. This can happen for a variety of reasons. We had a patient who unexpectedly started hemorrhaging following an uncomplicated normal delivery and we just couldn't stop it. As soon as we pumped blood in, it hosed out. The doctors had to perform an emergency hysterectomy and the bleeding stopped. I think it's fair to say we were all shocked not just at the incident itself, but at the fact that this woman lost 8 liters of blood. Also, that she spent just one night in intensive care before she was back on the ward, caring for her newborn, and she was home within a week. Women are bloody awesome excuse the pun. For reference, women usually have between 4.55.2 liters of blood circulating in their body, hence 8 liters is very scary. This was many years ago so I can't recall the exact details but basically, we had a lady on ventilation with sepsis and multi-organ failure, renal failure, respiratory failure, metabolic acidosis, deranged liver enzymes, the whole works. We counseled the family and they agreed to withdraw life support so DNR was issued and we took her off her ventilator. A few days later she's still around, unconscious, still in full blown sepsis with multi-organ failure. But brainstem functions were there. I remember looking at her charts with my registrar. I think resident in the US and my registrar going but. How? Then one day maybe about a week on. During visiting hours. The patient's son approached us before he left to thank us for looking after his mother. His parting words were. And I kid you not. I don't know if it's relevant. But my mother practiced black magic. My registrar made the ward sister contact the hospital chaplaincy team to inquire if they do exorcism. They don't. My blood sugar was more than 1000 when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I was less than a year old. My mom had taken me to the doctor's office 4 times in 3 days but the nurse called her a nervous mother and sent her home. Also diagnosed with Addison's disease a couple years ago. I'd probably had it for months and had been living on my own in a town where I knew nobody. The day I got home I basically had a conscious blackout. Happened a few more times over the next couple weeks and I lost the ability to sense low blood sugars. When I was finally hospitalized I was in Addisonian crisis. Took them 3 days to bring in an endocrinologist, and he knew what was wrong within minutes. They told me my heart would have stopped within a week due to low sodium high potassium. Not me but it's this thing my dad used to tell my sister and I. My dad served during the Gulf War and said he had to work on a guy whose head got ran over by a tank. What happened was a marine fell asleep against the treads and the tank drove over him. Guess the fact they were in a sand and wearing a helmet saved him. But only barely. My dad said the guys was still incredibly messed up. He never went into specifics. My old roommate's wife came to our apartment one night after working in the air. She is an NP now in a practice but she worked in a hospital for a while. A patient had jumped off his third story balcony and landed in a bush and was totally fine. So naturally, he tried again. The second attempt a branch got lodged up his butt. When they removed said bush from his butt he lost the elasticity of his sphincter muscles. The man will never be able to not crap for the rest of his life.
I'm fairly certain they can give you an artificial sphincter now. Not a doctor, but late last year, my dad went to the hospital early in the morning with terrible stomach pains. Thinking he had a bad ulcer, my mom called me at 7am to tell me he had had a heart attack. A couple hours later, after an angiogram, the doctor tells us that he has multiple artery blockages, including the lad, commonly called the widowmaker. He has probably been having heart attacks for years, and he has just shaken them off like it's nothing. He had a quintuple bypass at 8am the next day, and he is almost totally recovered. We are looking forward to going to a theme park this summer and riding roller coasters with doctor's approval. My grandfather is a medical anomaly. His doctors hate him so much. He cut out a cancer lump with a pocket knife. I was like 9 and held paper towels. Cut his thumb in half. Stumpy. Then the pointer on the adjacent hand, the long way. Looks like a claw. Cut a hole in his middle. I was young and helped clean and bandage. Survived a stroke. Has a brain aneurysm, a hernia, and like 4 teeth. He's a freaking mess, but still kicking. My grandma was similar. Had aggressive skin cancer and bought carbolic acid from the vet and would burn it off the man H them we cut and debride until we got to healthy bloody tissue. Like more than 20-30 times I helped her as a small kid until I got to be a teen and refused because I was scared I'd kill her. Just thought of a case I had while working in stroke rehab. Not a doctor but I saw her scans. Like 60-70% of her brain is gone. The woman had a headache years ago when she's in her 30s. Went to the ear and doctors told her it's a flu, gave her painkillers and sent her home. Needless to say it got worse. She went to the hospital again after at least 24 hours. Think she waited 4 hours in a bed before getting an MRI and by then, according to her family she's already not that conscious. The doctors said it's a small hemorrhage that bleeds slowly and the tear got bigger. She got emergency decompression and clot evacuation but it's still 36-48 hours too late. She lived because the op saved her brainstem and her family is well off enough to afford care staff and continuous rehab. But her mentality is like a baby and she could not even sit up. Sometimes I wonder if saving her life is the right thing to do. I was very early in. This kid hit up a convenience store near the hospital where I was working. Killed two people, one a kid. He had been beat to crap, shot, and wrecked his car. Thanks to the magic of CCTV and video monitors, it was all recorded. That was his last free day. My job was to get him in and out. We go him up and running. And the real hard part was seeing a 19 year old realizing life as he knew it was over. He made his choice. Dang though. This was last October I am a medical student. I had a patient who was 103 years old hospitalized for sudden loss of consciousness she woke up next morning, discharged 4 days later she just had a hypoglycemic attack she is a retired nurse who worked during world war 2. Not a doctor, former EMT, one time got called to a guy who had been stabbed in front of a bar, 30 odd wounds, face sliced halfway off, bowels out, sucking chest wound, s, impossibly severe bleeding. It was an absolute mess. Dude apparently survived. Three days ish later, different guy walks out of a different bar and trips on a curb and hits his head on a patio table. Talking to us on the way to the hospital. Dies two hours later from a brain bleed. Sometimes you just don't know. Nurse here. Took care of a man who had a platelet of 4. Yes 4. Minimum is 150,000. I was literally surprised he didn't bleed to death from just turning in bed. Had to send him, from nursing home, to the hospital at that point. Then he came back and still had platelet of 4 when labs was done a few days later. Out he went again and came back. Did labs and platelet were 3. Sent him out again. He finally came back and was admitted to hospice. He had this rare form of thrombocytopenia and while platelet transfusions were given, they didn't help much. I was amazed that those 3000-4000 platelets keep him from bleeding out that long. Him and his family were very nice though. Forgot about the 10 circumflex 3 units. I had an adult patient who was missing the right half of the brain. He had a severe brain injury, likely a stroke during infancy. Infant brains are amazingly plastic. They do a great job in recovery. He had mild to moderate cognitive impairment. I saw him when he was in his 40s. 
he got a CT scan of head for some unrelated reason. I had a similar reaction to most of you around. Then I remembered. Brain is brain. It's weird. I know a dude with only half a brain. He's totally normal. Cardiac surgeon here. Had this happen. Twice. It's called an infarct aneurysm. After a severe heart attack, the dead heart muscle balloons outwards with every beat. Not completely compatible with life with progression of time. What was shocking was, the aneurysm ruptured in these two patients and was resealed by the pericardium spontaneously. It was literally a hole in the heart wall on the outer side being patched by a thin membrane. Ticking time bomb. One of the patients got operated, is now fine. The other one refused surgery. He walked home. Not a doctor, but my cousin was in a terrible motorcycle accident a few months ago. She had to be life flighted to the hospital where they found out her ankle was broken. Her hip was shattered. I believe there may have been a tear in an artery somewhere. And the big one. She was internally decapitated. She was rushed into surgery to reattach her skull to her spine. And they had little hope she would ever walk again. It's now been less than 6 months and she's back to work as a nurse. Internally decapitated. WTF. Nad. A nurse. Guy walks into the ED, has huge long dreadlocks, tells the Tridge nurse's neck is a bit sore. She asks where. He pulls aside his dreadlocks and there's a knife sticking out of his neck. Next, in the oar, 18 month old had fallen from a change table. Open up his skull to pull out a ginormous hematoma. I peer inside and say up, where has his brain gone? I had been completely squished by the clot. They leave part of the skull off to account for swelling and put a huge piece of tape over it saying do not touch. No skull. The next day he is sitting up in the piku having an ice bowl chatting to his parents. Kids, there is no way an adult would ever be remotely the same. I almost died three times while being a kid. First for illness, second because I had the bright idea to eat a poisonous office plant and third because I managed to fall from the stairs cutting somehow my left wrist. All when I was 2-3 yo. As a bonus I could add a fourth time, when I had my sister saving me by catching me from the heels while I was going to fall off a window after my attempt to call the dog outside. I still ask myself how tf I managed to stay alive for 27 years. My mom once walked into the kitchen. And there was toddler me, happily munching on a broken jar. Apparently there was blood everywhere and I was just chillin, eating glass. Another time, I ripped out my entire ponytail, on purpose. Toddler me was an idiot. Maybe all toddlers are just dumb. My dad had aortic stenosis which was so severe he had been fainting and falling. He left the hospital he was in because he wanted to go to the cardiac surgeon who had done his triple bypass 5 years earlier. He left the hospital on a Friday but made an apt on the following Tuesday. I went with him. We took the train into the city. My brother met us and wanted to take the subway but I saw my dad was really winded so we grabbed a taxi. When we saw the surgeon, he looked at my dad's scans and said how did you get here today you took the train are you kidding me his stenosis was even more severe than the size they normally operate on. I think the surgeon was surprised my dad didn't drop dead on the train. Not a doctor, so a little shaky with medical terms. But you might be interested to hear about my grandmother. When she was 36, she had a debilitating brain aneurysm. She spent almost 100 days in the hospital, during which time one of her doctors just shrugged at my grandfather and said, I don't know, her heart just won't stop beating. A few years later, she had a stroke that paralyzed the right side of her body. She's been mentally handicapped and in a wheelchair since then. A few bouts of pneumonia here and there. When I was in high school, she got diagnosed with breast cancer, had a single mastectomy, survived. Two years later, colon cancer also survived she's now 72 and a few months ago we found out she had bone cancer she had surgery to plate her left femur because it was almost entirely eaten away and since then she's been on a slow decline we put her on hospice care a week ago and are preparing for her to pass peacefully but it's like her doctor said this woman's heart just won't stop beating tl dr my grandmother has survived everything not a doctor, but I met a few and curiosity gets the best of me so I always ask, what's the most freaked up thing you've seen? I was hitchhiking across Canada, and this doctor picked us up, 
so I asked once again. Buddy said it was an inmate they had to have on suicide watch. He kept swallowing razor blades. Once he got cut off, no pun intended, he just scrounged in his crap to eat the ones he would pass. I was caring for a patient on the medserg floor in nursing school whose kidneys were basically non-functional. His bun and creatinine were through the roof. I'm fairly certain his CI was in the 60s, and his GFR was 3. GFR basically shows how well your kidneys are filtering and is supposed to be above 60. This guys weren't doing crap. I asked my instructor what kidney levels were supposedly fatal and she said that before that day she would have said this guy's levels were. The guy was refusing dialysis too. The nurses made it sound like they had tried to educate him, but when I went in there and asked him about it, he sounded very unsure and said his main reason was that some of his friends said not to do it because it sucks. Found out those nurses actually just sucked and didn't educate him at all. So I told him, I really, really think you need to at least talk to the doctor about that option because it is probably going to be necessary for you. I hope he took my advice. He wasn't there when I came back the next week. Not me but a story from a friend. Patient came in having been bleeding from her anus for 2 weeks. Not, oh there's a little blood in my stool when I poop. Actively dripping from her butthole to the point where she had to wear a diaper. All day every day. She fainted 3 times from loss of blood and only after the 3rd time did she think. This might require medical attention. 2 years ago I fell 12 feet off a ladder. I had a fractured C3. Brain bleed. Concussion and 13 broken ribs. I walked out of the hospital 3 days later. My C3 is still fractured. My body built a bridge of bone to protect that area in my neck. Not a doctor, but I was a hospital chaplain. We had a guy come in on ice. He'd had a cardiac event and fallen off a roof he'd been working on and had been mostly without a pulse for nearly 40 minutes. We'd prepared the family that there was almost no chance the guy would make it at all. But the docs managed to keep him alive and he got a heartbeat back, though he was still in a coma. Docs told them he'd probably never wake up. After about a week and a half he did. Docs told the family he might be able to move his eyes around. But he would likely be so damaged he'd be able to do little else. Long story short. After 40 some days in the hospital. The guy walked out under his own power. With some aid for balance. Speaking some Spanish and English again. Don't get me wrong. He wasn't back to normal and had a long way to go. But every single person on the medical staff agreed he had absolutely no business even being alive. Much less that. Consensus seemed to be it just wasn't his time yet. Not a doctor but pharmacist. One patient heavily addicted to sleeping tabs and codeine. When I saw the full profile from the 6 pharmacies she got medication she received 680 zolpidums in 1 month. And 16 bottles of stop and I still pain syrup. Don't know how she kept standing straight and lie straight to my face. Not a doctor. This is from when I was a patient at a hospital myself. So I was walking around with my crutches to sit outside when this man came to sit next to me and started a conversation with how come you're using those crutches? They're awful. I left mine in the room. He went on to tell me about how this was his sixth total hip replacement surgery because the doctors always screw up. And under no circumstances did he want to consider that maybe, just maybe he's screwing this up by not listening to the doctors. Sure, this wouldn't have killed him, but then I was shocked at how dumb people can be. Not a doctor, just a witness. 2014 on patrol in Afghanistan. Our platoon leader stepped on a pressure plate IED with the IED buried a few inches to the side of his foot. A big blast, launched him to the side about 10 meters, the guy next to him back 5 meters, and another soldier nearby 3-ish. Somehow nobody lost any life, limb, or eyesight. Those three had severe concussions essentially and quite a few of us had minor ones. Best theory as to why they survived is the bomb planter dug it slightly too deep into the ground, causing the fragmentation to get buried and a lot of the concussive blast to be buried as well. This will probably get buried but I still think of that blast and question what the heck happened. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.